So let me do something here. We have before Jesus. We have Jesus. We have after Jesus. Before Jesus. Everybody's in hell. Sheol. Everybody. Abraham. Isaac. Jacob. Goliath. Everybody's in there roaming around in the covered place. Before Jesus. Got it? No salvation, distant from God. Hell, Sheol is a real place. Satan is really an accuser. He's roaming around doing all sorts of diabolical things because he got the whole world to fall. Got it? Before Jesus. Jesus comes and he overcomes everything. He overcomes death. He overcomes sin. He overcomes Satan. He overcomes hell. He overcomes all of it. Got it? So before Jesus, so when people on Facebook say there's no such thing as hell, that's not true. There, is a, there was a place called hell. There was a thing called death. There was a separation. Jesus comes, does his work. Then when you teach that, everyone says, well, then what? Now what? And so I just thought I'd share with you a little story tonight. A little pre-Christmas story, since we're the week before Christmas. And, and I think it looks like this. In all seriousness, I really believe that this is the situation now. I want you to imagine that there is a man and a woman or whatever. They're multi-multi-billionaires. And they have a two million acre plot of land. And they have uh, 10 kids, and they've got 70 grandchildren, and they've got 200, 300 great-grandchildren, and they just have this huge family. And they take that 2 million acres, and they devote it to that family. And they say, you do what you want to do on it. You can build a house. You can enjoy the streams, the ocean, the, the mountains, the deserts. You can enjoy all the beauty that is on this land, especially for you. You can farm it. You can put stores on it. You can bring inputted goods on it. You can put bars on it. You can put strip clubs on it. You can put sports arenas on it. You can do whatever the heck you want to do. This life we have given you, it's yours. Okay? That's the done deal. He's done it, the two million acres. And then the billionaire and his wife, or the billionaire, just to make it simple, he lives at the far, far end of it, and you gotta kinda cross a lot of roads and desert, and it's not easy to get to the place he lives in. And the place he lives in is up about 20 flights of stairs, and it's hot and and dark and not air conditioned. And when you get to the top, there's a door, and he's behind that door, in an old attic reading books, and you knock on the door, and often he doesn't even answer. And sometimes he'll answer from behind it, and you got to travel all that way, 400 miles, climb up the stairs, it's uncomfortable, and you knock, and you're not even sure if you're going to get a reply. Okay, I think the way it is now that Jesus has fixed everything in the past, I think God gives life. He gives us a planet. He says, have at it. It's up to you. And there are some people, most people, who really don't care that he's 400 miles across the desert up in that room. The great grandkids, he never answers. I'm not even sure if he's real. And the kids, no, he's really, he's my dad, he's my dad. You need to have a relationship with him. And there's a kid every now and then in the group who takes the journey and really does want to go and just thank him for giving him the two million acres and all the fun houses and carnivals or houses or markets or whatever they're into, right? Every now and then somebody in that group is going to say, I'm kind of interested in the dude who put all this together. I want to know that being. I want to at least thank that being and be appreciative of that being for what I've got down here. Does the, does the billionaire up in the room, does he dislike all the rest of the kids who don't pay him any attention? No, he loves them. That's why he gave them that life. 
Does he punish them? No, he doesn't punish them. He tries to bless them in every way he can. He puts the rain on the just and on the unjust alike. He is fully reconciled to everybody in that place. Everybody. But every now and then, there is someone who wants to know him. And they take the journey, and they may take the journey often. And they may pester him with knocking on the door. They may call out from outside the house, show yourself. They may want to know him. And that, those who do that are his children. They're the ones who want him in their life. The rest of them don't care. They're too busy. The thing, well, last thing about that is those who take the journey to meet him and see him and want to talk to him and bug him and, and at least get to know him, they're missing out on a lot of the fun that's going on in the two million acres because that thing offers them everything. But they say, that's not my priority. My priority is to know this being who gave all this. Why? Who is he? What's his purpose? What's the, what's the thing behind this mysterious figure? And the way Jesus taught, he said, not many people really care. So again, in the end, how it plays out is life is life. It's a gift to all of us. It's all been done and taken care of by Jesus. And so you don't have to worry about all these deleterious things and stuff. God loves us. He's been reconciled. He's pouring out the blessings. He's going to keep doing it. He's going to be there. Sometimes, whatever. But I'm just saying... I think that's how it is now. There's people who want him, and there's people who don't care. And the people who want him, in the end, they really do from the heart. Those are his children. Out!